Hi, I'm Oliver Goodbrod, an authorized CUTE trainer from EGITS. Welcome to this learning video based on material taken from the CUTE Essentials training course. With these videos, we will be giving you the key insights into CUTE as well as demonstrate the type of in-depth training available in the classroom-based Qt Essentials training course. In Model View Part 1, I would like you to give you an overview about the Model View concept, showing you some simple data models, some further proxy models, and at the end we will learn how to implement our own custom models. So in this training session, we will introduce the content concepts of model view. We will learn how to use the standard item models and understand the limitation of the standard item models. Then we will learn how to interface our models with some data coming from the backend. We will try to understand what proxy models are and how to use them. And for custom models, we will learn how to write a simple read-only custom model. Okay, so what is the motivation? Why should we take the model view architecture? So the main idea is that we would like to separate the data from the view. So separating the data from the view makes our components independent for development, testing and maintenance. So let's have a look at the overview about model view components. So on top we will see the view which is responsible for displaying the data structure. The delegate will be responsible for rendering the data as well as for editing. And the model will be the interface to our data structure. So when talking about model view infrastructure we will have to learn some terms. So an item is an imaginary unit of data within our model. And an index is a unique identifier to locate the data within our model. So in Qt we have three predefined types of models. The easiest one is the list model, which just contains a list of rows within our model. So if we would like to have a two-dimensional model, we can use the table model, which will have the data separated in rows and columns. And whenever you need a hierarchical model, you can use the tree model, which has rows and columns as well as the parent-child relation among the items. So let's take a look at the view classes within Qt. All the view classes are derived from the abstract base class QAbstractItemView. And, he, and here we will see a QList view, a QTree view, and a QTable view. But there is also other views available in Qt, like a QHeader view, which will show some header item views, or a QColumn view, which is a cascading list which you might know from Mac OS. So if you would like to have further information about these classes, please take a look at the classes documentation within Qt Assistant. Okay, so let's have a look at Qt's classes for the model implementation. So all models are derived from the Qt abstract item model. But Qt also offers you some ready-made models which are convenient classes for you to use. And it also gives you the choice of implementing proxy models, which are very useful for filtering or sorting your data. Data model. So let's take a look at the view relationships. So and this is a very important slide for you to understand the usage of model view concepts. So the first approach is the item-based widgets. So everything is combined into one class, which will have the data, the model and the view. To separate now the data and the model from the view, we can use the Qt standard item models. And you see 
that the data and the model is now combined and the view is separated from it. So the model is your data. The third approach would be to use custom item models. And you see that in this approach the view is isolated from the model but the data as well is separated from the model so that the model just interfaces to the data available. How can we address the data? Therefore we need the Q model index. And the Q model index refers to an item within our model. So it contains all the information to specify the location. The location is given in rows and columns and for hierarchical models it will also have the parent-child information. Okay, let's take a look at the QModel Index API. We have the methods for row column and if we have our hierarchical model we also have the parent method to, to identify the parent of a child item. Or we have an empty QModel index if an item does not have a parent. We can also ask the QModel index whether it's valid, which means it belongs to a model or it doesn't have negative row and column numbers. We can also ask the QModel index about to which model it belongs to. And the most important thing is, of course, we would like to get some data. And the data method also accepts a row so that we can get data for a given row. And we will see later how to use the different rows. So let's take a look how to use QModel index in tree and table structures. So let's take an example about the usage of rows and columns. And here on the right side we see a table model and we have three cells named A, B and C. And here is the sample code how to access these cells. For hierarchical tree structures we will also see how to access the parent the rows and columns. As well we have the index A, B and C and here you see how to access this from the source code. Item and item roles. So all the items perform various roles. So which is for example a decoration role for showing an icon or a display role to show some text information or for example a tooltip row. So you can supply different data to different items and the view will be responsible how to display these different data rows. So for example the cute display row uses displayed string in the views and the views simply ask the model for the data with the data function which takes an index, a unique index and a row. So for instance if you want to ask for the display text you just call the data function of your model with the given index and the display row and you will return a variant of type string. So there is a lot of predefined roles available in Qt and just have a look at Qt item data role documentation. So here is a short recap of model view concept. We have the different model structures for lists, tables and trees. So we talked about the components, the model which is the adapter to the data, the view which is responsible of displaying the structure. The delegate will be responsible for painting the items 
as well as for editing them. And then we learned how to use a unique index to locate an item within our model. We have the three predefined views, which is the queue list view, queue table view, and queue tree view. So we have seen that all the models are derived from queue abstract item models, and there is other abstract models available. Some ready-made models like the standard item model as well as the proxy model. So the index will contain information about row, column and parent information and we can access the data for a given row within our model. We have seen the item row like queue display row and some other standard roles available within queued item data roles enumeration. So talking about things you may want to customize. So customizing the model. So if the model is your data, you can use the Q standard item model or the item based widgets. Otherwise, you will have to adapt your own data by subclassing a model. If we want to customize the delegate, which is derived from Q abstract item delegate, you can use the standard delegate if that is sufficient enough for your purposes. Or you can use the custom delegate to control the display and editing of your data. If you want to customize the views, which is derived from Q abstract item view, you can do that. But this is a very rare case in normal applications. The normal approach is to use the views predefined in Qt. We hope you enjoyed this session of our Qt Essentials training. For the full experience, including labs, Q&As and additional info, we recommend you to attend the full multi-day Qt Essentials training course available from EGITS or any one of the Qt training partners. For full details, check out qt.nokia.com. Thanks for watching.